So far, we've been analysing where white plays the bishop to g5. Here, the bishop attacks the knight on f6 and puts pressure on black's position. But what happens if white doesn't put the bishop there, but instead opts for the more modest move bishop to f4? Here, we're going to analyse the game played by Gary Kasparov, none other, and here he's playing against one of the strong uh, Eastern European players, Rafael Vaganian, back in 1995 in the Novgorod tournament. And the game started with the Queen's Gambit declined, exactly as we've been analysing. But this time, the bishop is going to go to f4. So instead of bishop g5, we're now going to this square. So Nick, good or bad points about that square? Um, well, obviously not Billy um, threatening anything with the uh, knight, and if you played h6, it wouldn't do anything to the bishop. Okay. Um, yep. But that said, it's sort of... Obviously, it's attacking down a different thing. It's stopping black play, e5. It's attacking down a different thing as well. <laughs> yes, that's my descriptive, attacking down a different diagonal. But can so. we do anything on c7? I mean, a lot of juniors I coach, um, especially when they're younger, they like to do this idea of knight b5 mm. and knight c7. But is that realistically going to be happening here? Is that um, not...? No, I mean, it's... I can't really see... Mm, doesn't look great. Doesn't look like a good idea for white. No. Okay, so bishop f4, right. So let's say white continues in the same way. Right? Now black has a choice to make. Um, we've analysed already where black's played all sorts of moves, where black goes b6 mm -hmm. and tries to do the Tartak over defence. But in this position, because the bishop is on f4, not g5, the knight on f6 is un not under pressure, isn't it? No. And because the knight's not under pressure, it means that the d5 square is heavily protected. So black can actually play this move straight away. How does that look? Yeah, interesting. I mean, sort of saved time. Hasn't played h6, hasn't played b6. You've just gone straight into the move that you kind of want to play anyway. Yep. So if black has other options, I mean, don't have to put the knight on d7. We can just put it on a slightly better square, which is c6, if the uh, circumstances allow it. But I think just generally black is trying to now counter white centre much more quickly and trying to prove that the bishop is not as good on f4 as it would have been on uh, on g5. Now, if white continues with, say, bishop d3, black can swap and give white an IQP, but in general, we say that the bishop isn't as good on f4 as it, as it is on, uh, on g5, because here on g5, he actually attacks the knight, and therefore means we might have some pressure on, mm. on this square one day. Although it's not, it's not terrible. So bishop d3 is possible, but white doesn't really normally do that in these variations. Instead, white takes on c5, and black played bishop takes c5. All looks quite sensible, yeah? yeah. Queen c2. A typical move. Why do we want to put our queen there? Um, well, it's on that open file. There's potential sort of uh, tactics down that open file. And then for the future, yeah, looking at h7. Yep. Not sure what you're doing just yet, but, you know, potential things with, like, knight g5 or something like that. Funny you said that, that move, because that move actually comes up later. Yeah. Okay, but the yeah, drawback is, of so course... surprised. <laughs> well, the drawback is that the knight can come here and potentially attack the queen. Yeah. So Kasparov played a3, and black played queen a5. Right, so the queen zooms out. Um, maybe I just want to comment on, let's say black goes d4. Does that move look strong do you think because you know again we've seen how mm. the king is in the centre and black's trying to open up I think there, the there's a risk here because on the face of it you know you're, you're defending as much as you're attacking but what if white brings his rook on a1 to d1 and it's suddenly on the same line as the queen and that pawns a lot has a lot fewer alternatives then yep I think um we're just going to go. Your alternatives is terrible English, but you know what I mean. <laughs> what does Black really do about this? Um, I think yeah, you're right. I think we're just trying. I'm just trying to see if Black can go e5 here. Yeah, d4 is very risky. Maybe White could have actually considered casting queenside as well for the same thing, but not allowing any funny business along yeah. that diagonal. Um, I think. Okay, I think I agree that. White's just doing really well here. So um, d4 is one of those moves that black might want to do that, but they've got to be careful as to yeah. when they do that. So in the game, um, Viganian played queen a5. And this is the, the main line position. Um, we're going to look at them at the critical 
aggressive variation that Kasparov played, of course, because that's mm. what he's like. And then we're going to analyse in the next game some of the other variations where White plays a bit more positionally. Now, the other variations are going to involve White Castle and Kingside. So which move do you think I'm going to add, say that Kasparov played in this variation? I think we've moved the bishop to... Well, which way is my king going? So? Yeah, so your king's going kingside, definitely. With all those pieces on the queen side, I think the king's going to castle kingside. Right, interesting, because he went castles queenside. Ah. But it's a good thing that you, you said there, that you've got all these black pieces attacking down Bearing on the queen's down, side. Yeah. So it feels like a rather odd... It's like you're sort of moving into the belly of the beast, you know. <laughs> yeah, Sparrow's well... It's got a big attack on the queen side, so you move your king there. I mean, it just seems... No, no, no sorry, white. yeah, yeah, I beg your pardon. Okay, well, still. <laughs> um, You've got a 2640 who's attacking your queen's side. Could White have just played b4 as well? No, I'd seen, I'd already seen, I was looking at that when you first played that, I was like, that looks really weird. But, um, of course, you could just take that pawn on b4 because you can't take back because the rook is hanging. Good. So b4 doesn't work, but after Castle's queen side, does b4 work in this position as well? Let's say black goes. The problem with b4 now is the a3 pawn is hanging. Good, so the a3 pawn hands with check. So white's not actually trying to go b4 at all. Um, after castles, black just calmly went back to e7 anyway. Um, and now white decided, well, what do you think happens, Nick, when both sides castle on opposite sides? You get pawn storms. Mm. Not just pawn storms, but do you think that's a main way to... So how do you think white's going to try and pawn storm in this position? Play something like... Um Looking at which which two moves are you looking at? H six and G four. Uh, sorry, H three and G four. And then so G four is one move. What about H four? Oh yeah. Well, I'm just yeah, but G. G you want you want to play G four? You want to get it? Yeah, but uh, you can just take it. Well, okay, but then we open up the oh, G right. file yeah, yeah. for the rook. I'm not saying this is best or no. bad, but this is actually certainly a um a dangerous idea. I mean, if I go here, we've got moves like that. Yeah. Really hammy. So G4, not a terrible move, because the king's tucked away the other side, isn't it? Okay. So, in the game, Kasparov actually played H4, but I think G4 has been played. In fact, G4 has been played by uh, no less than Ivanchuk. And after black took on C4, um, he played bishop takes C4, E5, and then G5. Well, it's all kicking off a bit there, isn't it? It's all rather risky. Just, yeah, I mean, that's sort of typical of Vanchuk, just you know, <laughs> making things very complicated for, for his opponent and for himself. For himself, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the reason why, if White wants to play the castle's queenside variation, I think you, you must realise there's a degree of risk here, because you've got to attack, but then they get to attack. I mean, if Black gets a rook on the C-file, I mean, already Black White's got two major pieces on that line. Mm. It's not looking that healthy for White. So White's got to be extremely careful, which means that there's no hanging around. Um, after bishop e7, Castle just went straight for it. Now you might think, well, what's the point of h4 when at least g4 attacked the knight, doesn't mm. it? Well, here White's got an idea, which we're going to see in a moment. So Black took on, on c4, and uh, White basically took it back. And now, let's say if black played... Well, black really would want to get... It's always the same problem, isn't it? It's bishop. <laughs> but let's say black goes bishop d7. What do you think we could do about that? Now, you earlier said that you should never play bishop d7, but well, that I was only in a different variation. Uh, yeah. I did, but this position's a bit different because white's castle queenside. Right. Um, white's, sorry, already castle queenside with the king on, on c1. So... I don't know, the knight's protecting that. So how can we try and do something about the knight? So we need to th try and kick the knight away by... Um, what can we do? Remember, overloaded, if you can make him... Yeah, I'm just trying to think what we can do. I'm just trying to think. I mean, bishop g5, maybe? Yeah, but then I'll spot that and just go rook d8. Okay, so... It's, what about if we do something, but why don't we go g4? Oh, yeah. Since you can't take. Since you can't take. And then we're threatening this. But the move I really want to play is the one that Kasparov played in the game, which is this move. So what's our threat now? Let's say I go rook a to c8. Why is that a blunder? Because now if you take the bishop on d7, the knight can't take back, otherwise it's checkmate next move. Good. Protecting the h7 square. 
So Black would have to resort to doing moves like G6, and we're going to comment on that in the game mm. as to why what, what, what Black can do in this position. Okay, so um, Kasparov played H4, and takes on C4, Bishop takes C4, and then B6. Well, it's a similar idea. I think he's been listening to our DVD, isn't he, Vaganian? Even though this was 20... In 1995. <laughs> yeah, yes. a long time ago. But the idea is to bring the bishop out to the more normal squares in this very He was using chess base 3, I think. <laughs> and knight g5 came, right. So, knight g5, what's going on in this position? Are we actually threatening anything? Um, Do you think? Not immediately. But it's just keeping an eye on but this But it guy. really does limit... The, yeah, that... Black knight is. I mean, you can imagine that Casp, you know, Casper sitting across you. He's got knight g5, and you're starting to panic a little bit. You know, right, yeah. knight g5 is coming. Not g5, and the white queen's bearing down on h7. <laughs> yeah. Even though you can see you've got a knight there, you still get nervous. You still get nervous. I mean, maybe white can play knight e4 at some point and try and kick it away. Mm. Um, so the game played bishop a6. Why not something simple like h6 now to kick <laughs> that knight away? Well, h6 is possible, but the thing about this is that now black weakens his kingside structure. Yeah. So say we move the knight, we now are asking to be uh, hit by this. Right, yeah. Okay, so let's give a few moves. Let's go there. G4, rook c8. Do you see how really quickly yeah, white's yeah. attack is coming in? I don't, I'm not sure whether the black really wants to do this. Although having said that, I don't know, who, who's... <laughs> whose attack's quicker? Because I don't. if I move the bishop, I'm going to get attacked down mm. here. So maybe you just have to sacrifice, and then they take, and it all gets a bit crazy. <laughs> I mean, Black's king's been shredded, but White's lost the bishop. And you, well, you've got potential. What about knight g five now? Look, look at knight g five now. Knight g five now. Ooh. Uh, just, mm. It's not not pretty for either side, though. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going no. on. Okay, this is all a bit anyway, high in the sky. Let's get back to where we were. But uh, it's certainly an interesting variation. <laughs> Worth so looking at with your computer. You could put your computer <laughs> engine, you know, you know, your chess engine on that and have a look and see what was actually going on in that position. Yep. So Kasparov decided to go knight e4. And not very subtle, really. He's threatening to take. And after you take back. You've got the potential for checkmate on h7. Good. So black played g6. But is that really a move that black wants to do? It looks like... Well, now... Because that pawn's on h4, it just begging to be pushed to h5 now. I mean, not saying right now, but that's going to then undermine g, uh, g6. Okay, well, if I capture... Sacrifice the rook. Oh, good. And then white to play and win from here. Uh, just see. play the check by doing knight f6, and now checkmate. And then checkmate, good, yeah. So... There we have it, that's game over, done, done and dusted. Part <laughs> <laughs> h5 is maybe black can just go rook calmly rook c8, and h takes g6, uh, this actually looks quite risky. That's the critical p point in black's mm. position. So if we just sort of, I don't know, can we sacrifice on e6 now? Let's see why not. This all looks rather horrible. Uh, and then mate. <laughs> wow. So yeah, again, an example of the power of White's position in this in this opening. So um, h5 is possible. Um, Kasparov didn't do that. He took on f6 check, and then knight e4. So again, we know that next move he's going to try and go here. So, but just generally, do we think that White's got quite a good strategy? Yeah, I mean, it's funny really because you know, from my sort of club player point of view, I'm looking at the c file and thinking. That is wide open, and you've got your queen and your king in a line. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the rook uh, is begging to come to c8, but... But he's always kept up pressure on black's yeah. pieces, hasn't he? So black mm. hasn't got time to do that. There's that sort of counter-attack that's just sort of moving slowly towards black's king, which sort of seems to be keeping um, black from playing any of those moves that he's desperate to play. Yeah, and we see that happen here, and white now just went king b1. Mm. Um, could we have taken the knight on... C6. Well, no, because now we fall to the tactic I just mentioned. The um, But then I get bishop c7. Uh, queen... Uh, no. Um, uh, bishop. Bishop, bishop to d8. Um, can I sack the rook and then go rook king b1? It's all a bit... It's all a bit crazy. Or maybe even in this position, knight d6 looks quite strong, actually. 
<laughs> I thought we were going for a kingside attack, and we seem to have all our pieces on the queen side. I don't know. Although maybe black is doing fine here after queen b7. In fact, that was that's not really good for white, is it? No. So yeah, maybe the whole thing doesn't really work, but apparently black was going to intend to take on there and then go rook c8, winning the queen back for two rooks. And Kasper wanted to keep the queens on because he wanted to checkmate, didn't he? So king b1 was played, and queen b7, which was criticised, because now white can play h5. And uh, Kasparov ended up winning a really nice game. Um, in fact, the game finished in just a few moves, so I think we should probably just show it. So rook c8, but now it's a bit too late, because after h takes g6, um, black played knight b4. I don't know what he's trying to do here. But the idea is after that, it's just a fatal opening of the queen side. How can we get our queen and nick on that square? Um, just some now rather than in a few moves on that square now. Yep. Because the typical idea is to try and play the queen across. Yeah. But we can't do that. Just it's c3. Just a, yeah, queen c3, and then black has to play f6, which is really ugly. Um, and then attack the weak pawn. And black's going to play ugly move again. And then something like that, protecting the knight. I mean, all in all, black's had to do that. Yeah. It's not really what he wanted to do, is it? So, um, very tricky position for, for white, uh, for black, sorry. Might even be some nice uh, tactical variations involving sacrificing the rook. But okay, there's no need to do that, is there? So after um, queen c3, it looks like black's... So after knight b4... Hang on, so what's the purpose behind knight b4? Well, it's a double attack on the queen. Right. And it prevents queen c3 as well. So g takes h7, king h8, bishop e5 check, and black played f6. In fact, we won't go through the whole game, because what we're going to do is this part will no, be a part tactic. of our tactics. But suffice to say that Kasparov now found a winning tactic, so we're going to ask you to refer to the tactics section at the end for the culmination of how Kasparov finished black off in his position. But overall, do we feel that this castle's queenside idea was a very aggressive one, and it sort of suits the more ta attacking player, tactical player that of those who want to play I'd, this I'd just be, I'd be too scared to play that. But that's you. Side. There yeah. might be someone else out there who might want to, so... Yeah, yeah but they'd be wrong. No, <laughs> they would, no, I mean, it's kind of one of those moves that, you know, um, like I say, I wouldn't play, and then you realise that it is worth considering. I'd sort of, you know, m my first instinct would be to just rule that out as a potential move. And, right. And um, it's interesting to see that it works. It does. And the next game, we're now going to analyse some of the more cautious and more normal ways of how to, how to play this. But... If you're an attacking player, the castle queenside is the way to play, probably.